So another thing we've been uh, able to do now uh, under DirectX 11, which has always been a big challenge in any game, and certainly uh, it's, a, it's a challenge in, a, in, a, in an engine like ours where you use a deferred lighting pipeline, um, is being able to do real-time reflections. So a, a lot of what you do is uh, kind of um, baking those reflections in or cheating with those reflections. We wanted to come up with a system that was truly dynamic, that would allow us then to have things reflect that are changing in the environment because in Crytek's games and in our licensees' games, generally the environment is very reactive, very dynamic. So doing a, a reflective system like that would normally cost you, you know, half your performance because you have to do the same thing twice. That's you know, the nature of the reflection. So our guys came up with a way, uh, with this is what we call uh, real-time local reflections, of uh, getting a, a reflective surface working in the engine without it costing us a great deal in terms of performance. So we just modified up a couple of the materials there. I mean, you've seen how quick it is to change a corrugated iron wall into a mirror. And now you're seeing in real time, as the objects move around, that's being reflected uh, in the scene. And this is something absolutely 100% unique to CryEngine. No one else is capable of doing this. The interesting thing that we've got here as well is that this is, it looks static now, but we can change this now and the player can change this. So all we have to do is, um, a, a, a good dynamic example is a, is a particle, of course. So we'll place a particle in here and you'll see it's reflecting not only on the, uh, on the wall, on the surface, where the, where the reflections break up, it's taking care of that, calculating it all on the fly really, really quickly. And it's fully interactive, so we drop in now. These are breakable objects. We have a full destruction system in CryEngine using our, our proprietary physics system. As we break these objects up, they, they continue to reflect as they're moving through the environment. That's a, normally a really costly thing to do, a really difficult thing to do. Uh, and, and with DirectX 11, we're now capable of doing this on uh, all our PC games. I think if we, if we move on uh, and show where the uh, where the real time moves from the uh, look of the scene into where it moves into gameplay. So we apply our, our real time kind of rule to everything we do in, in CryEngine. And what's really important is being, not just being able to create this beautiful look and, uh, and feel, but also being able to play the game in real time as well. So, um, M &M. Oh, yeah. So um, creating uh, a, a, an environment for an AI to navigate through is a case of telling the AI where it can go. And that's always been a kind of laborious task where you have to put a load of different points down and say, look, these are places where you can walk and these are places where you can't. Now, in the kind of levels, the scale that we use in, Christ, in, in, our, in our own games and that our licensees are using, that's a huge amount of work. <clears throat> so we've come up with a real-time way of generating navigation, i.e. the places where the AI can go, uh, in real time on the fly. And what you see here, we've just placed a simple object uh, into the scene and we've said, okay, figure out for me, if I place an AI into this scene, where can that AI go? And this then generates all the data that you need for the AI system to navigate around uh, this entire environment. This is what we call the multi-layer navigation mesh. So it, it, it works in real time as we move objects around inside this, it will recalculate on the fly. So it can deal even at runtime with dynamic changes to the environment as things explode or are destroyed the AI will immediately be able to recalculate where it can and can't go. It deals with multiple levels. So if we take one of these pieces and put it on top of another one, you can see that the AI would be able to consider well, I can go above and below that object. Now, if we just drop a simple AI in, you'll see uh, how quickly, how quick it is for um, designers to place these things and suddenly really start playing the games. You know, all, all you have to do is define an AI, place them into the environment, And there's a test case we can just click on a, on a location. It's one of the tools uh, in CryEngine. Click on a location, and, and the AI will move to that to that place. So he's worked out his route through, and he's made his path there. Now, depending on the animations that you have there, obviously you can tweak that, make it look a lot more natural. Um, but it's a, it's an incredibly fluid system for uh, creating navigation and gameplay on the fly. So just by blocking the route off slightly, you saw he took kind of like the lo logical shortest route there. If we were to run this again and make his path a little bit more blocked, he'll be able to path through that. And you can see every time we place an object, the blue area disappears. That's that's because it's recalculated the areas that the um, character can move into.
I, I mean, that's a really simple example. Obviously, you spend a, a lot more time, and because it's real time, you can spend as much time as you want tweaking. You're not sitting waiting 20 minutes for something like this to be generated. You're not having to go through the legwork of doing it for like days of laying out your own paths and figuring out where the AI might go. And heaven forbid, then you change your mind about the way the level is going to be laid out and do the whole process again. This gives you more time to tweak it and more time to polish the look. Thank <laughs> you.